Steve, can you discuss allocation methods and the implication of the allocation method on the wool LCA? So allocation refers to the methods used to divide impacts between multiple products in a system. So for a, a wool system, wool are produced from sheep, and sheep typically produce both wool and a live weight product, and allocation is the method for dividing impacts between those multiple products. Okay. And um, can you uh, discuss the, the current focus of the technical advisory group on allocation methods and how this work may benefit the wool industry? So our work has focused on developing uh, methods, operational methods, and publishing these in peer-reviewed uh, journals. That's a process that is almost complete as we speak. Uh, we have looked at six different methods and it, it really goes to the heart of why this issue is relevant. Uh, we've seen at least a threefold difference in the impacts, the environmental impacts. So, for example, the, the carbon footprint of wool can vary up to threefold depending on which allocation method you choose. So, we have uh, now published a series of methods and we've made clear recommendations uh, mainly for the scientific community uh, but also companies who may be applying LCAs to uh, their product systems that they'll be able to pick that up and apply uh, these new methods and that will allow uh, for uh, much more manageable uh, comparison of studies, of benchmarking of studies with a consistent method to, uh, to achieve that at the point of allocation. Okay, and, and talking about individual wool industry members, could you give an example of how this would work for them? So since we've begun on this work, we've completed uh, different members of the, of the group have completed case studies in New Zealand wool and also in Australian wool. So this method's already been picked up and it's also been picked up by the FAO uh, small ruminants guideline for LCA. So via those methods, uh, we expect to see case studies released in the next year that apply these new methods. Steve, can you comment on the feasibility of having a single LCA for wool? So the problem here is that different wool production systems um, from different breeds, for example, will produce different impacts. Uh, different regions will produce different impacts. Uh, even the, the production efficiency of that system will influence the, uh, the environmental impacts from that system. So, to produce, uh, let's say, a single number for global wool really doesn't pick up any of those differences. Uh, and more importantly, perhaps, uh, those different types of wool, uh, because they're linked to, to different breeds um, and perhaps uh, are more commonly drawn from different regions, there's systematic differences between those, uh, those different types of products, if you like, when it comes to the environmental impact or environmental footprint. Can you give an example of different wool production systems used for different wool products? In Australia, we produce uh, ultrafine wool, uh, and this is typically produced from a, a small-bodied uh, merino sheep. It's a, a very specific sheep that produces that type of wool, uh, and characteristic of that system would be a, a relatively low wool yield and would be uh, also relatively low lamb production. If I compare, for example, to a coarse uh, wool, uh, a, a garment ma manufacturer or a, an outer garment manufacturer wool or a manufacturing wool, for example, uh, that has a higher yield. Uh, now, the way that flows through into the environmental impact, because we're talking about impacts per kilogram of product, uh, the impacts tend to be higher for that uh, finer wool and it relates to the type of sheep that produces it. Uh, the contrast would be that outer garment or manufacturing type wool, interior textiles wool, classically are produced by sheep that yield more wool for a start and also uh, tend to produce more lambs and uh, in our research here in Australia that has tended to relate to a lower impact per kilogram of product. So given that it's not feasible to have a single LCA for wool, how do you deal with this complexity when undertaking the wool LCA? 
I think one thing that is going to be required is assessments of different production systems around the world, uh, focusing on those different breed types, different regions, uh, to give us a really good understanding of the variability in impacts. Uh, now, it's possible that once we have a data set of that type, that we can uh, uh, pick up the key indicators, if you like, um, potentially even produce regression equations, uh, predictive methods, if you like, so that in the future studies uh, can predict impacts from wool. Now that's a little bit, uh, that's a long way, I guess, in advance of the science now, uh, but we're really at the stage of needing to collect that information across the range of uh, wool production systems we have both around the world and across the different uh, product systems and sheep systems that we have. How can wool industry members along the supply chain, such as spinners and weavers, use this information that's been collected uh, in the LCA for the products they are manufacturing? One of the key benefits of LCA research is that it takes a whole of supply chain uh, view of the product and that enables uh, manufacturers to identify where the main impacts lie within a production system uh, and the flow on benefit of that is the opportunity to uh, make improvements uh, where the, the biggest impacts lie and so it's a great tool for prioritizing uh, how to improve uh, the environmental credentials of wool by reducing their impact and to look at the whole supply chain when that's done.